Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news of this evening, one man arrested for cable theft in Mandeville. The Manchester police on Tuesday morning arrested a man in relation to the attempted theft of hundreds of meters of flow communication cables in Mandeville. The police say around 4 o'clock, while on patrol, they intercepted a truck being used to draw the cables from underground along Hargreaves Avenue. Five men involved in the operation fled the scene. The truck, which was seized by the lawmen, is registered to an old Harbour St. Catherine address. It is not clear the extent to which flow customers may have been affected by the vandalism. In the Clarendon mass shooting, authorities now say 11 wounded up from 9 previously reported plus 8 killed. According to updated figures from the Ministry of National Security, 11 people were wounded during Sunday's mass shooting in Cherry Tree Lane, Clarendon. Following the shooting, it had been reported that 8 people died and 9 others were wounded. The incident has left the residents traumatized and the nation in shock, but the government and the security forces remain adamant that justice will be served. National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang has made this bold assertion we will bring them to justice through their maker or through the courts in relation to those involved in the bloody attack on the weekend in Cherry Tree Lane. The ministry, of course, has two roles to play immediately. We'll track down the perpetrators as well as the network of support they have and prosecute them. And confidence will find, especially through the happy ones, the gunmen who committed the murder. Secondly, we have to deal with the community itself, which is really traumatized. But this was, I said, the comment at time when, in fact, the policing has been showing very positive results. In the particular year they're operating, they were aware of, they were aware of tensions, monitoring and dealing in the year for about two weeks to see to what extent they could intercept and prevent anything like this. And one way or another, bring them to justice. Meanwhile, consultant psychiatrist and a therapist, Dr. Wendell Abel, is urging the government to maintain the psychological support being provided to community members. Dr. Abel, who spoke with the news on Tuesday, said that the incident represents a dark day for Jamaica and has added to the continued psychological trauma being experienced by its citizens. A lot of us in the wider Jamaica, wider population, would have been affected in part by this horrendous act, it's what we call secondary traumatization. But we have to remember though that grieving is a normal, natural process and it may take a long time. So we should not restrict this um, intervention to just a short term. This has happened in one community. But every night we will look at crime side news, we are exposed to the violence. And it speaks to a wider problem that our society creates an enabling environment to, to violence to the extent that we become desensitized to the process. Electrical technician ambushed and killed in Spanish town. An investigation is underway into the death of an electrical technician who was shot and killed in Spanish Town St. Catherine on Monday night. The deceased has been identified as Jamil Markland of De La Vega City, Spanish Town. It is reported that about 7.45 p.m., Markland alighted from a motor vehicle in the vicinity of the Salt Pond the Road stoplight and was pounced upon by a group of gunmen who fired a shot, hitting him all over his body. The injured Markland was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The probe is being carried out by the Spanish Town Criminal Investigations Branch. Two Saint and men charged with murder Two persons have been charged with the murder of a man following an incident at a bar in Paritown, Ocheria, Saint Anne, on June 21. They are 31-year-old Roshin Allen, otherwise called Coco, a construction worker of Buckfield Oterius, and the 26-year-old chef Torian Pearson, otherwise called Terry, of Pimento Walker Oterius. The St. Anne police say about 11 p.m., 43-year-old laborer Kevin Clark of Paritone got into an altercation with a person in a bar. He allegedly hit Allen over the head with a bottle and ran. He was accosted by onlookers, after which Allen and Pearson allegedly stabbed him multiple times. 
Allen also reportedly used a stone to hit Clark in the head. Clark was rushed to hospital and admitted in serious condition. He was later transferred to another hospital where he succumbed to his injuries on June 23. A report was made to the police on June 27, and on August 7, both accused men visited the Otorias police station in relation to the seizure of a motor vehicle and were arrested. They were jointly charged on Tuesday based on an eyewitness statement. Men allegedly found with a gun in Territory Lane charged. Two men who were detained in Territory Lane Clarendon on Monday for alleged illegal possession of a firearm have been charged. They are 24-year-old Devontae Jackson, a construction worker of Territory Lane, and 22-year-old Rick Edwards, a farmer of Lawson Boulevard, for parts of Clarendon. They have both been charged with being in possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. The men were detained as the police teams patrolled the community in the aftermath of a mass shooting in which eight people were killed. The Maypen police say about 10.30 a.m., a team of police observed two motorcycles enter near the community. They were stopped and one of the persons ran. A chase ensued and the lawmen caught Jackson. The police say a black and gray crossbody bag was retrieved from Jackson and a black Taurus 9mm pistol and a magazine with 12 rounds were found in it. Jackson reportedly told the police that the bag was given to him by Edwards, who denied the claim. Both were subsequently arrested and charged. A court date is being arranged for both men. Men abandon gun on church grounds after spotting cops. The police in St. Catherine are searching for a group of men who abandoned an illegal gun on a church compound on Monday as they sought to escape the police. Police reports state that about 2.30 p.m., a police team went to the St. John's Road Church of God where a group of men were seen. The men ran when they saw the police leaving behind a 9mm pistol affixed with a magazine containing rounds. The Spanish Town Criminal Investigations Branch is probing the matter. Minor tremor felt in St. Andrew on Monday. Jamaica was rocked by an estimated 4.3 magnitude earthquake on Monday. The quake was confirmed by the earthquake unit at the University of West Indies Mona campus. Preliminary reports suggest that the quake occurred at approximately 3.51 p.m. and was reportedly felt in Mavis Bank, St. Andrew. It had a focal depth of 18 kilometers with its epicenter located approximately 10 kilometers southwest of Buff Bay, Portland. VASA steps up pressure on GPS following expiration of power restoration deadline. The Minister of Energy, Daryl Vaz, is demanding that the Jamaica Public Service Company provide a comprehensive report outlining areas still without electricity and the timelines for restoration. The JPS had been given until August 12 to restore power to all customers except for parts of St. Elizabeth. However, in a media release on Tuesday, it said there were a few isolated outages remaining, mainly in the parishes of Westmoreland, Manchester and rural St. Andrew. Noting the JPS statement today that it had met the deadline for full restoration, Vaz said that the claim was not in line with a report from some members of parliament. I am imploring JPS to do a review and to make a public what the situation is of today because their statement is in contrast to what the reports that are coming in fast and furious. I hope that they are accurate but we need to know definitively and we need to get the schedule from now going to the 31st as a matter of urgency, Vaz said. On Monday, Vaz wrote to the GPS requesting that his ministry be immediately provided with a report detailing the status of electricity restoration by community and the parish across the island. In the letter, Vaz noted that the information requested will assist the ministry in evaluating the overall recovery efforts. And Vaz is also demanding that the Office of Utilities Regulation state what sanctions it will impose on the GPS should the company not be fully compliant with the August 12 deadline. 
Meanwhile, in correspondence sent to the OUR, Vaza reiterated a request made to the GPS for a detailed account to be provided of the compassionate measures to be implemented for customers whose electricity service was not restored within the previously communicated timelines. Given that the JPS has not met these restoration deadlines, the ministry anticipates an extension of service disconnection or penalties for all affected customers. The OUR is also requested to ensure that JPS immediately publishes updated restoration timelines, Vaza told the leadership of the regulatory body. Thank you everyone for watching. See you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for another news update.